with the return of football it's always a slow build because you have march for free agency uh you have april for the draft you have may for mini camp and june for mini camp and stuff like that then there's a little break and then july that's when it really gets official at the end of July because that's when training camp begins. And that's what's going on right now with the Baltimore Ravens and really the rest of the NFL as well. Training camp has started, so football is officially back. But the way that you know Ravens football is back is when you start getting a bunch of presses. Like Ravens had the presser two days ago that they just it came out of nowhere. I didn't even know what was happening with Mark Andrews and Roquan Smith. And then they had the presser yesterday that was actually announced with John Harbaugh, Marlon Humphrey, and Lamar Jackson. Now, uh, we're getting ready to talk about that presser, but before we get into it, during the presser, something that I was struggling to hear was the reporters' questions. I just could not make out what a lot of them were saying because the fans, the kids were so loud. They were going crazy, but I loved it because that means they were enjoying themselves. They were having a good time over at Owings Mills, and Ravens, they do do a very, very good job with the fan experience, especially the kid experience uh, over at Owings Mills when you go to training camp. So shout out to anybody that was there yesterday. Shout out to anybody that will be there today or just coming up soon. Shout out to anybody that ended up getting passes uh, to go to the training camp because if you've never been, go. Uh, if you get the opportunity to go, go. Take it because it's just it's different, man. I know a lot of y'all going to the open practice in a couple of days, and that's going to be cool, but the training camp experience is just is so cool, man. It's the, you right there up close and personal with all the players while they go through the practice and whatnot. Take the opportunity if you get it. So somebody who... um. Mm. If you would have asked me like four or five months ago, were they going to be at training camp? I probably would have said no, I don't think so. But it all depended on how the contract situation went. But I'm glad that it all got worked out was Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson, at his part of the press, he said that he feels young still. Because he was asked how is he feeling at training camp and whatnot. He said he feels young, even though he is young. Uh, but he said he feels more experienced and he's really glad to be back now. He also said that the atmosphere feels different and it even smells different around it. He said maybe it's the popcorn, but when he said the atmosphere feels different, I thought that was interesting, though, just the way he said it, because you hear this stuff all the time. You, you hear stuff about whether football players are fan, like football players will be like, oh, man, this is um, the healthiest that I've been all my career. You hear that literally every single year from some players. Uh, as far as the atmosphere being different, the vibe being different, you hear that a lot from fans, too. Like, oh, man, like, tell, tell me you ain't heard this before. Tell me, like, right before Raven season starts. Oh, man, th this season feels different. I, I don't know what it is, but this season feels different. I know you done heard that before plenty of times from people. You might have said it yourself. But anyway, with Lamar Jackson saying it, I think it actually means something. Because I think a big part of why the atmosphere is different, especially for him, is because he has more control now. He has more say-so. He has more authority when it comes to this Baltimore Ravens offense because we've heard it mentioned plenty of times this offseason. Oh, Lamar's getting the keys to the offense. Oh, Lamar's going to be in more control. But to hear from him about the, the, the vibe and the atmosphere being different, I think that's what that was all about. Uh, he said they it feels like uh, they've been diving right into the playbook. Uh, he said the guys came back ready and seemed like they learned a lot uh, from the time that they went to minicamp and the, the breaks that they had. He said it feels like a lot of guys are re being really studious. Uh, and they learned a lot. He talked about how Zay Flowers, his new name is the Joystick. Uh, and somebody asked him, who's more dangerous in the open field? You or Zay Flowers? And that, hey, that's a question right there. Because we all heard about Zay shaking Roquan Smith out his cleats yesterday. And, hey, shout out to Roquan Smith. Hey, sometimes it's just life gets the best of us. And yesterday, that was one of them days for Roquan Smith. Life got the best of him. So we ain't mad at it. But shout out to Zay Flowers even more. For shaking the veteran and, and just continuing to give Ravens fans and, and Ravens players so much to be excited about. Uh, but he said that uh, he between him and Zay Flowers, he said, we'll both have our moments. You see, Lamar is very, um, he's a very humble guy. He's a very, 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 very humble guy. And when, uh, when you pit him up against his teammates... He won't ever shut them down. He won't ever, like, trash talk them like that. He'll do some, like, fun and games and stuff like that. But he won't ever, like, uh, you know what I'm talking about. He won't ever big himself up like that or anything like that. But anyway, um, he also uh, said that he just has to get his guys the ball and let them do them this year. And he specifically mentioned I don't know if he mentioned this before. I don't remember Lamar ever mentioning this before when it comes to uh, his receivers and playmakers and whatnot. Uh, but he said he's going to let them. He wants to see them get yak. You're going to let them get the ball, let them do them, and get that yak. 
Uh, and that's important because yards after the catch make life easier for everybody. Uh, he said that he's going to be calling the offense without the wristband this year. So that, that'll be something right there. That'll be something right there. He said Todd Monken is having it to where Lamar is not going to have that wristband. Because y'all know you used to Lamar going like that, looking at the wristband sometime when he called calling plays and whatnot. But he said this year will be a lot different. So I said, okay, all right. And, and that's, that's a big part of that responsibility. Like Lamar's getting big responsibility this year. And that can help his growth process so much. And that, that can help him take leaps and bounds. And, and now with growth. With growth, as we all know in life, with growth comes mistakes. So I'm not expecting Lamar Jackson to be perfect this year. I am expecting him to take a big leap this year based off of the offense, based off of the personnel, based off of just everything. Uh, but it's, it's going to be some growing pains involved, and that's fine. As long as Ravens are winning. <laughs> he said uh, this offensive system, uh, is, he said it's just different from g Rose. Uh, and he said he, would, he wouldn't say if one was – Harder than the other because previously uh, Marlon Humphrey had mentioned how he feels like this offense is simpler than Giro's and I, don't know, I thought that was just kind of strange. But anyway, uh, Lamar said OBJ gives him a lot of confidence. He said OBJ said if you throw it in my perimeter, it's not going to be an interception. He said whether he's going to catch it, whether he's going to bat it down, whether he's going to tackle the defensive player or whatever it is. He said it ain't going to be no interception. So you throw it to me, I got your back, and that's important to have uh, because and Lamar did say that. Um, he got confidence in him, man. OBJ gives him a lot of confidence, uh, and that's important because if you if you have confidence in your receivers or your playmakers, oh, you're going to trust them. But if you don't, oof, that could be scary because you could be looking at them. You could be staring them down. They might even be open. But if you don't trust them, then, well, well you know how that, that goes. Uh, and he also talked about the freedom uh, of the offense. He said um, if they see it, then they'll make the audible. And if they're right – they, or if they're wrong, they end up talking about it afterwards, going over it with Todd Monkin. And that's what it's about, learning, learning. It's about making mistakes. Hopefully they make all the mistakes in practice. I know there's going to be some in the real game too, though. They're not perfect. Um, but it's, that's what it's about, man. But the learning process, man, you got to go through the good and you got to go through the bad uh, as well. Marlon Humphrey, who spoke to the media uh, right, before, uh, right, yeah, right before Lamar Jackson did, uh, he was asked about Odell Beckham Jr. He said Odell Beckham Jr. looked good. He, he even looked good back in minicamp. Uh, and he said he tried to connect uh, with him down in Miami, and he's just excited for the OBJ era. Um, and he said that he asked some offensive players about the differences between this offense and Giro's. Uh, and, again, like we mentioned earlier, Marlon Humphrey said that they said it's more simple. Uh, he talked about Zay Flowers just being very polished. He said uh, a lot of times when rookies come in, they're not very polished. But once they become veterans, they get polished. But he says Zay is already like that. And we've been hearing a lot of a lot of praise for Zay Flowers, a whole lot of praise for Zay Flowers from a lot of different people. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing because if we were hearing bad stuff, <laughs> it would it would worry us. But Zay, uh, again, he's a first round pick for a reason. Um, so Ravens are counting on him uh, to be a big impact. Uh, and, and he talked when he talked about Zay Flowers. This, see, this was my probably my favorite part of the, the uh, whole presser yesterday, because Marlon Humphrey said that with Zay Flowers, he got that South Florida route running, that cutting and breaking ability. And then he brought up Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy, uh, and he said he has that X factor that a lot of South Florida guys have. I said, All right, Marlon Humphrey, uh, uh, yeah, you were cool before, but you way cooler now just for that comment alone. And then this was the cherry on top for me. He even mentioned how they had one of those guys. In Hollywood I said alright now Marlo all right, I, I got a lot of love for you now Like I already did before But now I got way more Just for you showing South Florida love For you showing Hollywood love too So shout out to Marlon Humphrey uh, He was also asked what he was trying to work on uh, With his game during training camp And he said the good thing uh, and, and this part was really good too And this was like a little like Hey EDC good job He said uh, the, the good thing about having Really good wide receivers is a lot of different releases, speeds, and tempos. And he said he wants to get back to winning uh, in the first five yards, like we're jamming him off the line. So, again, has Marlon Humphrey said this before? Mm, I don't think so. But regardless if he did or not, it's true. The better the receivers, the better it can make your defense. The better it can make your cornerbacks. Because they're getting more work. And they're getting a more variety of work because of what they're going up against. So, Really good points by Marlon Humphrey. He also brought up how uh, Darius Slay should have been a Raven. Mm. And he, he was straight up with it. She should have been a Raven. He did talk about Rocky Cena and talked to, he complimented him, but he talked about how Darius Slay should have been a Raven. He still said he was still a little upset about that. 
Uh, he said Lamar is going to be Lamar no matter what, but he'll be able to be more flexible in this offense. Uh, he said when you – now this part too was significant. He said when you not necessarily take that away, but when you give that green light to your quarterback, nobody can see it better than the guy that's looking at it all. And this is a great situation for Lamar. See, now with that part, I feel like Marlon Humphrey – uh, he, he was basically saying like, hey, they, they took away Lamar's flexibility in the previous offense. He couldn't do as much. He didn't have as much freedom in the previous offense. He said it without saying it because he, he like caught himself. Because, again, Marlon Humphrey, he, he got the PR training down. He caught himself from saying that. He stopped himself from saying that. And he kind of switched it up. But he basically said like in the previous offense, he ain't had that flexibility like that. But so we're looking forward to him having that flexibility now. Now, John Harbaugh, John Harbaugh was the first one to speak. And we kind of went in reverse order. But John Harbaugh was the first person to speak. He was asked about J.K. Dobbins. And Harbaugh said, I wish it was a simple answer. There's always a lot of things that uh, go into football. We're working through it. J.K.'s working through it. Looking forward to when he's out there. He's in all the meetings. He'll be happy when he's out there. He wants to be out there. We both want the same thing. So. As far as his answer with J.K. Dobbins, I wish I had a bunch of papers in my hands so I could just throw them up in the air because that's pretty much what his answer was to me. It seemed like, oh, who knows what's going on right now? I thought, he knows, but the way he presented it was like, oh, it's, it is what it is right now. So we'll see. Um, J.K., of course, is on the uh, physically unable to perform list right now. So once he passes the physical, then he could be back. Or will he be back? We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully he is, man, because I'm, I'm looking forward to J.K. Dobbins this year, man. And just I think with J.K. Dobbins this year, uh, if he does remain a Baltimore Raven this year, um, I, I think a big thing for him will be efficiency uh, because I think his opportunities will be different. I think his opportunities will be, I don't want to say limited, but um, I, I don't think they're going to give him like, all right, J.K., you are RB1. Like it would be a 1A, 1B type of thing with him and Gus, but I do think they, they, would, they would have been leaning more toward J.K., but – with whatever's going on, who knows? We'll see. Because, again, Ravens, they, they don't forget this type of stuff. The, the, the contract disputes and the hold up, they don't forget that type of stuff. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, he also talked about how usually in December and January, Ravens have been great finishers as far as winning. He said, but over the last four or five years, that hasn't been the case. He said, we didn't play winning football in certain ways, and those plays, they bite you. He said, we got to do everything we can to be healthy. And that's it right there. That's it right there. Health is wealth. And Ravens have not been very wealthy the past couple of years when it comes to health down the stretch. It's so important. It's so important to have Lamar out there. It's so important to have all the receivers out there. It's so important to have the, the defensive players. It's so important to have everybody out there, man, because that's how you're going to win. And that's how you're going to advance. That's how you're going to get far. A lot of times with football, it is about who the best team is, but a lot of times it's also about who the healthiest team is. So if your team can remain healthy, oh man, that, that gives you such a bigger shot at, at everything. Uh, he also talked about Bowser's Achilles. He said Bowser's Achilles is fine. He said Bateman's Liz Frank surgery is fine. But he said sometimes there are other areas that get a little sore, but both are on reasonable timelines that I don't want to share right now. So that could mean anything. <laughs> that could mean anything. And Harbaugh, but he has been better. He's been a lot better recently about when he does share a timeline that it does actually come to fruition and they do come back at that appointed time. Um, but so, but he didn't want to share anything about Bowser and, and Bateman right now. So we just got to wait it out, continue to wait it out. Uh, and then he also talked about how the rookie Salah uh, has earned some time with the ones. So he's been having some time with the starters. And that's significant, but I, I, I think they'll go a veteran route. Um, they could still sign somebody. Uh, you still got Ben Cleveland. You got uh, John... Is it John Simpson? I want to say it's John Simpson. But you still got some guys out there. But uh, I, I think they may end up just signing somebody and having that person be the left guard. But we'll see. We'll see. We won't know till we know. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Leave a like on the video. And on that note, we are out.